Chapter 11 Knowing More About the Spirit Realm My benevolent friend wanted to share other observations with me about the several districts of the colony, but pressing duties called him back to his work post. You'll get the chance to visit our different service areas, he said. As you can see, the ministries of Nasalar are enormous centers of activity, and not even several days of exploration would be enough for a detailed view of just one of them. But opportunities will not be lacking. And even if it is possible for me to accompany you, Clarencio has the power to grant you a permit to visit any department. We returned to the Airbus stopped and didn't have long to wait. By now, I felt almost at ease, and the presence of so many passengers didn't bother me anymore. The day's experience had brought me enormous benefits. My mind was swarming with pressing questions. So I took the opportunity to interrogate my companion a little more while it was still possible. Lysias, my friend, do you know if all spirit colonies are exactly like this one? Do they entail the same procedures and characteristics? By no means. On the physical plane, each region, each place displays its own peculiar features. So you can imagine the multiplicity of conditions on our planes. As on Earth, individuals here are identified according to common sources of origin and the greatness of the purposes they must fulfill. But we must remember that each colony, like each entity, stands at a different degree of the great ascent. All collective experiences vary from one another, and Nasalar comprises a collective experience of this particular kind. According to our archives, those who preceded us often sought inspiration in the endeavors of devoted workers of other spheres, and in compensation, other groups now seek our help in forming their own settlements. So each organization displays its own unique characteristics. The pause in our conversation was longer than usual, so I asked, Did the idea of forming ministries originate here? Yes, it did. The pioneers of Nasalar visited the service centers of Alvarada Nova, once the most important spirit colonies that surround us, and there they found division by department. Our founders adopted the same process, but replaced the word department with ministry, except in the case of regenerative services, which only obtained its promotion under our current governor. It seemed to the founders that organization into ministries would be more meaningful as an expression of spirituality. How interesting, I exclaimed. But that's not all, Lysias continued. The organization is eminently strict concerning order and hierarchy. No prominent position is granted based on favoritism. In the last ten years, only four spirits have been granted defined responsibilities in the ministry of divine union. After a long period of learning and service, most of us reincarnate again to carry on our work towards perfection. While I was curiously listening to his explanations, Lysias continued, When newcomers from the lower regions of the umbral show us that they are ready and willing to cooperate, they are housed at the Ministry of Assistance. But if they are rebellious, they are taken to the Ministry of Regeneration. When they show improvement over a period of time, they are admitted as workers in the service of assistance, communication, and elucidation in order to adequately prepare themselves for their future planetary tasks. Only a few spirits are allowed the privilege of a long stay in the Ministry of Elevation. And it is very rare indeed, every ten years, for any to reach the level of working in the Ministry of the Divine Union. And don't think our jobs are vague expressions of some kind of idealistic activity. We are no longer on the sphere of the globe where disincarnate spirits are compulsorily promoted to ghost status. No, we live in an environment of hard work. The jobs in the Ministry of Assistance are laborious and complex. 
The duties in the Ministry of Regeneration require strenuous effort. Those in communication demand a high standard of individual responsibility. In elucidation, they require a great capacity for work and profound intellectual values. Those in the ministry of elevation require self-denial and spiritual enlightenment. Lastly, the activities in the ministry of divine union require right wisdom and the application of sincere universal love. The government center, in its turn, is the busy seat of all the administrative activities, and numerous services are under its direct control, such as nutrition, electric energy, traffic, and transportation, among others. Actually, the law of rest is strictly observed here, so that certain workers do not become more overburdened than others. But the law of labor is also strictly adhered to. As for rest and relaxation, the only exception is the governor himself, who never uses what he is entitled to in this respect. Doesn't he ever leave the palace, I inquired? Only on occasion, when the public welfare demands it. The only exception is his weekly visit to the Ministry of Regeneration, the area of Nasolar with the largest number of disturbances due to the attunement of many of its inhabitants to their counterparts in the umbral. Multitudes of wayward spirits are housed there. On Sunday afternoons after prayer, with the colony in the great temple of the government center, he spends his time working with the ministers of regeneration, assisting them in handling the most difficult problems. In such efforts, he is depriving himself of sacred joys in order to assist bewildered and suffering spirits. The Airbus dropped us off in the neighborhood of the hospital, where my comfortable room would be waiting for me. On the public street, I once again heard beautiful melodies floating through the air. Noticing my inquiring look, Lysias kindly explained, That music is coming from Nasolar's workshops. After a series of observations, the government discovered that music stimulates the efficiency of labor in all areas of constructive effort. Consequently, no one works in Nasolar without that joyful incentive. Meanwhile, we had reached the hospital entrance. A nurse eagerly met us and said, Brother Lysias, you are being called to the ward on the right for urgent service. My companion left, displaying his usual calmness, while I retired to my room. As usual, I had many questions on my mind.